overreaction Monday in the NFL. And for your New England Patriots and guys, it's always nice when the Bills lose. It's even better when the New England Patriots take them down. Got to love that. We'll see what it means big picture. But for now, it's a good day. Sub for Patriots dubs. It's Victory Monday here on the channel. Perfect time to join the movement here at Patriots today as we're going to have you covered almost every single day with the latest Patriots news and rumors. So sub for Pat's dubs. Let's keep this momentum going. All right, let's get into a little three-pack overreaction Monday roundup here on Patriots today. Mac Jones, he is back as the franchise quarterback. Eh, that's an overreaction. Like, let's let's not make this more than what it is. And look, what it is is one a very, very good start. I think this is a top three to five game of his career. Um, there's no doubt he needed this performance. I mean, look, if the Patriots' backup QB situation was better than it was, it is, I think there would have been a real possibility that Mac Jones could have been benched before this game. But uh, luckily for him, it is not great. And they've rode with him. And look, he delivered a terrific performance against Buffalo. I mean, these are franchise QB type of numbers. 25 of 30, very accurate. 272 yards, couple of touchdowns, QB rating over 125. Uh, and PFF graded him highly as well with the 73.5 overall great. I think what was most impressive with Mac Jones is he delivered under pressure. He got blitzed a decent amount and uh, he held up, stood in there and made some great plays. I thought he did really, really nice. I mean, you look at the numbers versus pressure, eight for 913 yards, a touchdown and almost a perfect passer rating. Like the elite QBs in this league perform under pressure. And I don't mean just like mental hurdle pressure. I mean like literal 300 pound dudes in your face. Uh, they stand in there and deliver the football uh, consistently. And that that's that's what Mac did. He did it at a very, very high level. So there's no doubt this was an encouraging performance for him. While he's not, you know, necessarily considered the franchise QB at this exact moment, that does not mean the narrative cannot change. Mac Jones still has a shot to change the perception in New England. If you can win this next game in Miami, which a uh, little teaser, we'll talk about if the season is back on or not. You can win in Miami this week. They didn't look great last night against Philadelphia. Uh, things can change quickly, not only for Mac Jones, but for the 2023 Patriots, Bill Belichick perhaps. Uh, for now, I wouldn't consider him the future, but uh, I don't think that door is slammed shut. Uh, we've seen him play some good football in New England. It just hasn't been consistent. If you can go on a little run here, things could certainly change in a hurry. What do you guys think? I want the audience to weigh in on Mac Jones. Is he the QB1 of the future in New England? Type Y for yes. Type in for no. I still would lean no, but I'm very encouraged by this performance from Mac Jones. Pinned comment. Let us know in the comment section. All right, let's keep it rolling here on Overreaction Monday. Have the Patriots found their offensive line? Maybe. I mean, it certainly looked a lot better. Uh, again, we just showed the numbers where Mac Jones is getting blitzed. He held up. The O-line did a decent job there as well. Uh, the Patriots made some, line, uh, some offensive line uh, changes by putting – uh, and went to right tackle, and the O-line played awesome. Uh, coincidence? I, I don't know. Is it just one game? Maybe, but uh, you're going up against a very good Buffalo front, and I know the Bills have you know, kind of been this funky team this year where one week they look like a Super Bowl contender and the next week they don't, but uh, you got to give credit where it was due. You look at the PFF grades. Other than Cole Strange, everybody else graded up well above average. I mean, PFF's grading system, it's kind of like a knock below like real grade. Like, if you're, like, in the 60 to 65 range, I'd say, like, 65 is average. Um, everybody was well above that. Like, a 74.5 for Unwinhu, that, that's above average. Uh, Strange was below average, but everybody else was good uh, in that regard. And uh, credit to City So for grading well as well. Switching to right guard, playing good over there. Uh, we talked about uh, potential offensive line changes here on the channel last week uh, when they brought in. Uh, Connor McDermott. Uh, now, he wasn't the player they turned to at right tackle, but I'm just glad that uh, the competent coaching stood out here, right? Like, hey, we're not getting it done up there. We got to move some things around. Well, you move it around, you're going up against a good team, not an easy situation, and uh, you played well. So kudos to the offensive line. Uh, we'll see if they can build off of this performance and uh, take it down to Miami as well. Today's show is sponsored by Prize. Picks. I love playing prize picks, the best daily fantasy sports app. And I think what makes it the best daily fantasy sports app is it's just very easy. It's very simple. They don't complicate it. Uh, they make it just 
easy. Like I said, you pick two to six players on any given entry, and if they will go for more or less than their prize picks projection. So, like, for example, tonight I'm doing a little Monday Night Football two-pick here. Uh, Kirk Cousins, more than 238.5 passing yards. Brock Purdy, more than 235.5 uh, passing yards. I think uh, both offenses will perform well tonight. Uh, when you pick two players on an entry, you can win up to three times your money. But if you pick all the way up to six players, you can win 25 times your money. Yes, if you can hit on those six-player picks. So pricepicks.com slash CLNS, that's where you go. Use code CLNS to get a deposit match up to $100. It's just you versus the projections. You're not playing against other uh, players. Uh, get started with Price Picks today. Very simple, very easy, and very fun. Okay, uh, Unwenu back at right tech. Uh, started his career as a tackle was great. You got to keep him there now, and surely you will, right? Like you don't have that performance offensively as an offensive line, and then shake things up more. I mean, I think that's a guy uh, you keep over there at right tackle. You look at his PFF grades his first couple of seasons; they were terrific. Uh, 85 overall, 87 uh, run block, pass blocking, 71 again above average there. Just five sacks allowed in uh, almost 900 snaps. I mean, those are above average right tackle play numbers. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Mac Jones spoke glowingly about the offensive line because he's been under siege a lot the last two years. He said the offensive line especially just gave me the time I needed today. When I have time, I can go, I can read the offense how we're supposed to, and I really appreciate those guys. And look, we've seen a lot of times the last couple of years where Mac Jones is frustrated on the sidelines, and I think a lot of that has been a combination of things. Poor offensive line play, poor receiver play, uh, Poor play himself, poor play calling. But it seemed to all click yesterday. Is it a fluke? Is it a one-game fluke? Or is this something that you can really build on? Eager to find out. I mean, if you double dip the Bills and Dolphins in back-to-back -back weeks, things get very, very interesting, which gets us to our last discussion point here. Is the season back on? Absolutely. And uh, producer Nick Roloff, a.k.a. Roley, is our super Patriots fan here. And I do want to bring him in here because – I'm not ready to go there. It is overreaction Monday, but Roly, your logic here is somewhat sound. Explain L it. Listen, here's the thing. I was out on the season, but then they pull off the unthinkable and beat the Bills at home, granted, but they beat Buffalo, who has owned you since Tom Brady's left the team. So you beat them. If you go into Miami, a place that you have never been able to do well either and beat a really good Dolphins team, well, now you're sitting at 3-5 and five with three straight winnable games at home against Washington. You would think coming off two big wins, you win that one. I think they're a better team than the Colts on a neutral field. Gardner Minshew, I think Belichick would get the win there. And the Giants aren't no good either. So you win there, and now you're sitting at 6-5. and five. The season is back on. I mean, even if you drop one of these four and get to 5-6, and six, you're still at least in the we have a chance mode heading into right. the final six weeks. I mean, this week to me is everything. And if they're able to beat the Dolphins, I will argue now that it might be time to sell, or not, excuse me, buy at the deadline. If they lose to the Dolphins, maybe they do sell. Yeah, this is a pivotal week, I think, for the franchise, not only for this year, but perhaps long-term as well. And look, uh, if they play like they did yesterday, they can beat most teams in this league. Can they sustain that? That's the big question. I mean, we've seen little flashes the last couple of seasons from Mac, from this team. Obviously, the defense is more than flash at times. Uh, but you beat Miami, then you could go 4-0 in this stretch. Uh, Rolly is optimistic about it. I'm cautiously optimistic about it, but uh, I am excited to see how it plays out. Zach Cox with a note here. Uh, next three games are against defenses ranked 27th, 29th, and 30th. Uh, a chance for Mac Jones and the offense to build some momentum if they play like they did yesterday. And look – I almost view this more as like the Mac Jones opportunity than necessarily like the Patriots this year being this playoff contender opportunity. Like to me, it started with Buffalo and it continues for this next month. Like this is make or break time for Mac Jones in New England. Like if he's going to change the narrative, uh, it, it's now. I mean, the clock is ticking. You've got uh, 11 games left this season and a very manageable stretch coming up with some subpar defenses you got to go perform well for an extended stretch because you know bad quarterbacks have good games all the time and I'm not saying Mac Jones is a bad quarterback but like even bad quarterbacks in this league go out there and on an individual Sunday and perform well the good ones they stack 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 occasional bad game then they keep stacking like can Mac Jones do that 
that's something we're going to be watching for here on Patriots Today. All right, guys, predict the Patriots record in the next four games. Um, I know Rolly's hoping for four and zero, oh, and look, we all are. But give me three and one. Like you go three and one, you get to five and six, and Mac Jones plays well. You got a shot. You got a shot heading into uh, you know almost December at that point. So uh, three or more wins is what you need. Get your predictions in down in the comments. All right, guys, it's going to do it for today's episode of Patriots Today. I'm Harrison Graham. We'll be back tomorrow with another video. So subscribe and join us then.